Welcome to the Airbus A320 fuel lesson. In this lesson, you will learn how fuel is stored and how the system operates. Additionally, normal indications will be presented. Fuel is stored in three fuel tanks, two wing tanks and one center tank. Each wing tank is further divided into an inner and outer cell. Six electric fuel pumps supply pressurized fuel to the engines and APU through their associated fuel lines. The APU also uses a dedicated fuel pump if the fuel system is not pressurized. The fuel lines are connected by a common crossfeed valve. The fuel system can be controlled by the fuel panel, fire panel, engine control panel, and APU panel. System operation is displayed on the fuel page. The fuel tanks are located in the wings and the center section of the fuselage. Each wing tank is divided into two cells, inner and outer, which are separated by a sealed rib. Two transfer valves are installed within each sealed rib. These valves permit fuel to gravity flow from the outer cell to the inner cell. The maximum fuel capacities for the A320 are as follows. There is a vent surge tank outboard of the outer cell in each wing. The vent surge tanks allow for thermal expansion of fuel without spillage through the vent system. In addition, there are two overpressure relief ports located on the underside of each wing, one connected to the surge tank and one connected to the inner cell. These overpressure relief ports are carbon discs that will rupture during an overpressure condition. They can be seen underneath the wing. A white cross indicates that the disc is intact. The Fuel Quantity Indication System, or FQI, is controlled by a two-channel computer. Channel 1 is primary. If Channel 1 fails, Channel 2 automatically takes over. If either of the FQI channels fail, the system will operate in a degraded mode. Double hash marks are shown over the last two digits in each fuel quantity display to indicate that fuel quantity indications are less accurate. The computer provides information about the fuel system and transmits the actual total fuel quantity as well as the quantity and temperature of fuel in each tank to the fuel page. The FQI system also controls automatic refueling. This is the normal fuel quantity display for the center and wing fuel tanks. Total fuel on board information is presented on both the fuel page and the EWD. Trapped fuel indications are displayed on both the EWD and fuel page. If the fuel quantity system is inoperative, it is possible to determine the fuel load on the ground with magnetic level indicators or MLIs. Each wing has five magnetic indicators, four in the inner cell and one in the outer cell. The center fuel tank has one magnetic level indicator. The two FMGCs use FQI input and fuel flow data to provide fuel on board information to the MCDU's fuel prediction page. The total fuel on board is shown followed by FF plus FQ. After engine start, the total fuel quantity is automatically entered by the fuel quantity FQ sensors. The amount of fuel flow, FF, is measured by fuel flow sensors. This provides a redundant source of fuel quantity information and can be used to monitor the fuel quantity when a fuel tank sensor is inoperative. The A320 is certified to use Jet A, Jet A1, Jet B, JP4, JP5, and JP8. Wing tank fuel temperatures are displayed on the fuel page. 
Temperature is displayed in Celsius for each wing's inner and outer cell whenever there is fuel in the respective tank. Center tank fuel temperature is not displayed. Normal temperatures are displayed in green. When the temperature in the respective tank exceeds or falls below a preset threshold, the fuel page automatically appears and a green pulsing advisory message is displayed. If the temperature continues to exceed the low threshold, the temperature indications become amber and a level 1 caution is generated. An important limitation to remember is that if the total air temperature reaches minus 34 degrees Celsius when using Jet-A fuel, the fuel page must be monitored to ensure that the fuel temperature remains above minus 36 degrees Celsius in the tanks feeding the engines. Let's take a look at how the fuel flows from the tanks to the engines. The fuel lines provide direct tank-to-engine fuel supply from the wing tank inner cell and the center tank. The fuel lines are depicted on the fuel page. Low-pressure fuel valves are installed to control fuel flow to the engines. These valves are electrically controlled by the engine master switches or the engine fire push buttons. A green vertical line indicates the valve is open. Shut down engine 1. Observe the amber in transit position of the valve. The valve is now closed. Above the low pressure fuel valve is a digital readout of fuel used. It is displayed in pounds for each engine and will automatically reset during engine start. These indications serve as a valuable backup if the FQI system fails. There are two electrically powered fuel pumps installed in the center tank and two electric pumps in each wing inner cell for a total of six fuel pumps. The fuel pumps are controlled by push buttons located on the overhead fuel panel. Each fuel pump is depicted by a box on the fuel page. All pumps are capable of producing the same amount of pressure. However, pressure reduction valves on the wing tank pumps allow the center tank pumps to have priority and pressurize the fuel manifold when all pumps are running. This allows center tank fuel to be burned first. When the center tank and center tank pumps are providing fuel to the engines, a green center tank feeding memo appears in the right column of the memo section. Before the engine can be started, each of the fuel pumps should be turned on. Assuming normal electrical power is supplied, when the wing tank fuel pump push buttons are in the on, lights out position, the pumps are energized. This is the normal indication when the wing tank fuel pumps are operating. Shut down the left wing tank pump number one and review the changes on the fuel panel and fuel page. Notice that a white OFF now appears on the push button to indicate the pump has been manually shut down. On the fuel page, note the change in the fuel pump indication. The fuel pump is now displayed in amber with a horizontal line. If both wing fuel pumps fail, fuel can still be fed to the associated engine using gravity feeding. This allows the engines to continue operating. Notice when pump pressure is low, the pump displays amber with an associated low caption. Operation of the center tank pumps can be either manual or automatic. The desired mode is controlled by the mode select push button.
If the mode select push button is selected to manual, man appears in white on the push button. Select the mode select push button to manual. Center tank pump control is now in manual mode and the pumps can be selected on or off using their respective push buttons. When the pump push buttons are selected to off, the pump shut down. When the center tank pump push buttons are selected to on lights out, the pumps operate. The center tank pumps are now operating and providing fuel to both engines. If the mode select push button is selected to auto with the center tank pump selected on, automatic center tank pump operating logic becomes active. To see how the automatic mode works, select auto. This is the normal configuration for the fuel panel. If fuel is loaded in the center tank, the center tank pumps automatically turn on. However, once the slats are extended to position 1 or greater, the center tank pumps automatically shut off. Select flaps 1. This allows each wing to supply its associated engine during takeoff, thus preventing both engines from receiving fuel from a common source. During climb, once the slats are retracted, the center tank pumps resume operation. Select Flaps Up. When the center tank becomes empty, the pumps continue to run for a short period of time and then automatically shut off. The fuel system is normally operated in the automatic mode, even when no fuel is present in the center tank. Auto also accommodates for IDG oil cooling. The oil system for the IDGs uses fuel flow for cooling. This fuel is tapped from the high-pressure fuel line of the respective engine and then is returned to the outer cell of the associated wing tank. If the outer cell is full, the returning fuel overflows into the inner cell through a return spill valve. However, if the corresponding inner cell is also full, the associated center tank pump automatically shuts down. This is to allow fuel to be burned from the respective wing tank to make room for the returning IDG cooling fuel. The fuel crossfeed valve is used to manage a fuel imbalance. It may also be used during non-normal conditions, such as single engine operations, to ensure fuel is available where needed. The crossfeed valve is normally closed. You can control it with the crossfeed push button. Notice the push button is lights out. This is its normal indication. Open the crossfeed valve. The open light indicates the crossfeed valve has successfully opened and the valve on the fuel page is displayed in the inline green position. In the memo section, fuel crossfeed appears. This message indicates the crossfeed push button has been selected to on. It is not a confirmation that the crossfeed valve is open. The fuel system attempts to maintain fuel in the wing outer cells for as long as possible for proper wing loading, which extends wing life. Two transfer valves automatically open when either inner cell quantity reaches a low level. On the fuel page, you can see there is currently fuel in the outer cell. As fuel is transferred, the valves indicate an amber in transit position. When the valve is fully open, the indication changes to green. Also notice that the outer tank fuel transferred memo appears to alert you that the transfer valves are open. Once the transfer valves are open, they will not close until the next refueling operation.
Fuel pressure for the APU is normally supplied by the fuel tank pumps pressurizing the fuel manifold. The APU also has a dedicated fuel pump that provides fuel pressure when the other fuel pumps are not operating. This pump comes on automatically if the left side of the fuel manifold is not pressurized and the APU master switch is selected to on. There are no flight deck controls or indications for the APU fuel pump. This fuel line is equipped with a low-pressure valve that is controlled electrically by the APU master switch and serves to cut off fuel to the APU. Here, it is shown in the open position. Selecting the APU master switch push button to off closes the low-pressure valve. The valve is now closed. A refuel defuel control panel is located in the right side fuselage, forward of the main gear. When the door is open, a green refueling memo is displayed on the EWD. Under the right wing, a small door allows access to a refueling port. Typically, refueling is an automatic process, using the control panel to distribute the fuel. However, manual refueling may be accomplished by using the refuel valve controls on the refueling panel. It is possible to refuel the aircraft when only battery power is available. During automatic refueling, the outer cells are filled to capacity first. After the outer cells are full, fuel then overflows into each inner cell through a spill pipe. During refueling, fuel is only introduced into the center tank if the planned fuel load exceeds the maximum capacity of the wing tanks. If the center tank contains a significant amount of fuel while a wing tank is less than full by a predetermined amount, an auto-feed fault occurs. It is not uncommon to see this during refueling operations. If this does occur, verify the refueling message is present in the left column of the memo section. That is correct. That is incorrect. That is correct. That is incorrect. That is incorrect. That is correct. That is correct. That is incorrect. That is correct. That is incorrect. That is correct. That is correct.